let's go ahead and dive into talking about three quick things that you can do to make money for your online coaching business before the end of the week or the weekend or whenever it happens to be that you are listening to this episode. And when it comes to building a business, obviously having structure, following a proven strategy is absolutely important. But when it comes to getting some quick results and quick wins, it doesn't necessarily have to be super complicated, like so many coaches want to make it, right? And so what I want to offer you this week is the ability to create money and to help people in your business in a way that is super simple and straightforward. And before I dive into these three reasons, I just want to highlight a couple of the reasons that I think coaches really tend to struggle with making money in their business, right? Number one is inconsistency. This is the death of a business. If you are not consistent with your activity in your business, you can't grow, right? Because inconsistency doesn't build awareness. And most importantly, it doesn't build trust. And my friends, if you don't have trust, and you haven't added value consistently, you don't have an online coaching business, okay? You must earn the right to pitch a sale and that takes time, okay? So you've gotta be consistent for weeks and months and years in your business and you'll see the snowball effect of that as a result. The second reason that I think coaches struggle to make money in their business is not following a plan or a proven strategy. That's a huge, huge problem. People coaches really like trying to get on all kinds of free trainings and stuff and like piecemeal together a business, like a, it's, it's almost like they try to put together a business full of puzzle pieces that are all from different puzzles. Right. And it never works. You cannot build a lucrative and sustainable coaching business that grows consistently and predictably. If you don't have a proven strategy in place and you're not going to make that up on your own. You want to follow a proven strategy that someone else has created and has been proven to work over and over and over again. If you're not doing that and you're struggling to make money, that's probably a big reason why. The third reason that I think a lot of coaches struggle to make money is in overthinking, right? They overthink everything, <laughs> every detail of an offer, every word of a social media post, everything about how a Facebook live video looks. They literally overthink everything. And that just slows people down that need for knowing everything before you start, or that need for perfectionism that doesn't do anyone any good. Okay. So get your brain out of overthinking my friends. <laughs> then another reason that I think coaches really sell, slow themselves down is fear around sales and what people will think. Look, I don't want to be salesy. You don't want to be salesy. You don't want people hitting you up as salesy. But when you go back to number one, consistency with your value, you're never going to come across as salesy. You're only salesy when you just show up and randomly pitch sales without the earning the right to do so. Or like when you're trying to convince someone to do something that's good for you and not for them. And you're not going to do that. Two more lack of follow through and follow up. I swear coaches leave half or more of what they could earn every single year on the table because they don't follow through, whether that is on completing projects or follow up that could be following up with people who inquired, etc. And then the last thing when it comes specifically to hindrances around making money online, I see a lot of fear around technology and I would certainly not consider myself a technophobe. I also wouldn't consider myself a technical genius. Okay. So I am probably like, if, if there's like 0% tech skills on one end of the spectrum and hundred percent tech skills on the other, I'm probably at like 30%. Okay. And I've been able to build a multi-million dollar online business. You don't have to be a tech wizard. And in fact, I teach my clients when they coach with me, how to keep it as simple as possible because we are coaches. We are not, <laughs> we're not web design people or whatever. Right. Uh, so, okay. So let's go ahead and dive into what we are here to talk about today, which is a couple of insanely simple non-techy things that you can do to make some money and help some people this week. So I'm going to be covering three revenue generating activities for you to get started on. Okay. So the first thing I'm calling get personal and follow up. All right. So whether you're connected to people on Facebook or Instagram, or it might even be email, doesn't really matter. If possible, use a voice message. 
Okay. A little voice note and contact people who have inquired or expressed interest in working with you and just never followed through for whatever reason. It could be someone who inquired about your services in the last six months. It could be someone you did, you actually did like a consult conversation with, but they said no. It could be someone who did maybe like a short-term offer with you. Like if you run challenges or 30-day programs or something like that, but they didn't convert long-term. It could be someone who interacts with your posts and videos and things like that, but you've actually never had like a sales conversation with touch base with people who could be on that list of prospective people to follow up with, right? Start a conversation with them around why you're reaching out to them, make it really personal and relevant. You could mention something that you recalled from the conversation. You could uh, mention a comment they left on one of your posts or something like that, but you want to make it personal and relevant and you're not pitching to them. Here's where the not salesy thing comes in, right? Simply engage them with something that's thoughtful and always end your message with a question. And of course, if you are asking the right questions and you're making it genuine, people are going to respond to you. And there will typically be a few back and forth exchanges, but if it feels appropriate and they're like, yeah, I'm still struggling, you know, if that's kind of where the conversation goes, then you can say, hey, would you like to have another conversation or would you like to have a conversation about, you know, working together so that we can solve that problem? That is totally fine. You don't start with the pitch, but if the conversation is open and it ends up going that direction, have at it, my friends. Okay. The second thing that you can do in order to generate income this week, and actually this is a really good thing for long-term as well, is enlist the help of your clients. Almost like creating this rally cry around building your business and getting referrals. And so if I was going to do this, I would make maybe a post or a video for my clients to really enroll them in your mission. So you could send the video or post via email. You could post it in like a member's Facebook group. And in this video, you can kind of say and describe three things. Number one, shower them with love. Tell them how incredible they are and how amazing they are and how grateful for, for them you are. Okay. So shower them with love first, then tell them your goals and your mission in your business. There's nothing wrong with that. How many of you guys, and I'm actually, I could probably do a better job of communicating this myself now that I'm kind of saying it, but this is stuff I was really good at doing when I had my gym. Tell them what your goals and your mission for your business are. If you want to help 50 clients between now and the end of the year, tell them that, okay? Tell them what that would mean and how it would change the world and what it would mean to you. And then ask for their help right? So let's say you want to help 50 new clients between now and the end of the year, and you share that with your clients. You're going to tell them why that's important to you and the impact that it will have. Then you're going to tell them you need their help, and you're going to ask who they know that could use your help, who they'd love to be on the journey with, whatever in whatever kind of journey you're bringing people on with your coaching and who might be ready to take a next step, right? It could be someone who's been asking about their transformation or the work you've been doing with them, something like that. And then ask them to connect you with their friend. I personally like it when people send me referrals to connect me over Facebook Messenger, like in a three-way message, because it's super, super personal and I'm really able to take over the conversation. Um, it can, it doesn't tend to work as well if like the friend gives you, gives them your number or email or something like that. Like if you can get their information, that's better, but we'll we'll take what we can get there. And then make sure if they are giving you their friend's information that they tell that friend that you're going to be contacting them. So it's like not out of the blue. Okay. And another good time, and this is just like a side note when it comes to asking for referrals like this is really throughout the year, obviously, but like when your clients are really celebrating success and things like that. Okay. And you could do things to incentivize those referrals. Oftentimes, like your clients love you, oftentimes just kind of getting them and like rallying them around the mission for your business can be enough to get them to take some action. But you could also do things like increasing your referral incentive for a certain window of time and things like that, just to get people to take a little bit more action faster. Okay. And 
The third thing is that this to make money this week, you can check in with your old clients and invite them back to work with you. That's called reactivation, okay? So it's similar to number one, except the people that you're following up with from the first tip are not people who have been like long-term paying clients. They might've done like a, a short-term program. Mo probably most of them you had interactions with and they didn't buy for whatever reason. The third tip is to actually uh, do some reactivation, checking in with old clients and inviting them back to work with you. OK, and the way that I would suggest doing that is basically, again, very similar to the first the first tip. It's simply about starting the conversation, right? It's not like going right for the pitch. You're basically like, hey, I was thinking about you. How's everything going? Have you maintained your weight loss or have you lost that last 20 pounds I know you wanted to lose? And opening up the conversation, typically you will find that they are still struggling. I do this all the time in my business. I will follow up with people who worked with me in the past or especially like people who inquired about working me but didn't pull the trigger. That's more like number one. And typically like there's no progress made when people aren't getting coaching. Right. So that can be really good. And what that can do is, especially with your past clients, people who already know, like, and trust you, it can help them not only commit to coming back to work with you, which obviously is what we're talking about here in terms of making money, but it can really help them recommit to themselves, which is really, really important because you guys, your soulmate clients, the like around the problem that you solve, it is a major struggle for them, right? I knew for the clients in my gym, eating well and being consistent with exercise was a major battle, a constant battle, a battle they had had for literally decades, a lot of them, right? And it's going to be the same for your potential clients as well, most likely. And even if the battle wasn't that long, the problem you solve is a deeply painful problem for your soulmate clients. And what we know to be true is that when people are not receiving coaching plan, strategy, accountability, is that there is, and this is kind of across the board, there is a 95% chance that they will fall off track, whether that's in business or in health and fitness, people need coaching you guys. And I really view it as part of your duty and responsibility to consistently check back in on your past clients. And maybe they found someone else to work with and they're still getting great results, or maybe they're in the 5% who can get results on their own. Great. But most of the time, the story will be that they have fallen off track, that they haven't continued to progress. And in many cases that they've gone on the backslide, right? So as a coach who cares and who loves your clients and who wants amazing things for them, I highly, highly recommend that you take some time every couple of months and check back in with people who are not currently active clients. Okay. So a couple of quick suggestions. Let me just do a super quick recap. So the first suggestion was getting personal, sending follow-up messages to people who have inquired about working with you, but haven't pulled the trigger or people who did like a short-term offer with you, but didn't convert long-term. Second thing is enlisting your clients in your mission and asking for referrals. And then the third thing is following up with past clients in the name of reactivation. Okay. I hope this is super helpful and I hope that you are all in. I hope that you are ready to execute this and really get results. And if you are, send me a DM over on Facebook. Let me know if this was helpful or feel free to jump into my free Facebook group, which is Authentic Conversion Organic Six Figure Fitness Business, where I'm in there every single week doing coaching and teachings and trainings and things just like what you heard today. Lots of strategy, lots of mind work, lots of business building tools. So I would love, love, love to see you in there.